Everyone are interested in knowing about the planets which are similar to Earth. Last year Hubble telescope found 4,422 exoplanets which are in the habitable zone to their respective stars. In those planets one planet is most similar to Earth. Scientists named this planet as Kepler 186f. Kepler 186f, the first Earth-sized extrasolar planet to be found within its star's habitable zone, the orbital region where an Earth-like planet could possess liquid water on its surface and thus possibly support life. Kepler 186f was discovered in 2014 in data taken by the Kepler satellite before its mission ended the previous year. The planet has a radius 1.11 times that of Earth. The mass of Kepler 186f is unknown, however, if it has an Earth-like composition, its mass would be 1.44 times that of Earth. It was the fifth planet discovered around its star, a dim red dwarf 500 light-years from Earth with a mass 0.48 times that of the Sun. Kepler 186f orbits its star every 129.9 days at a distance of 53.2 million kilometers or 33.1 million miles. It receives only 32% of the amount of light that Earth receives from the Sun, but water could exist in a liquid state if its atmosphere has sufficient amounts of carbon dioxide. The other four planets in the system are Earth-sized, however, they orbit much closer to the star and thus are not within the habitable zone. Kepler 186f is far enough away from its star that it may not be tidally locked and its day may not be as long as its year, with one side always facing its star. A new study from the Georgia Institute of Technology provides new clues indicating that an exoplanet 500 light-years away is much like Earth. Kepler 186f is the first identified Earth-sized planet outside the solar system orbiting a star in the habitable zone. This means it's the proper distance from its host star for liquid water to pool on the surface. The Georgia Tech study used simulations to analyze and identify the exoplanet's spin axis dynamics. Those dynamics determine how much a planet tilts on its axis and how that tilt angle evolves over time. Axial tilt contributes to seasons and climate because it affects how sunlight strikes the planet's surface. The researchers suggest that Kepler 186f's axial tilt is very stable, much like the Earth, making it likely that it has regular seasons and a stable climate. The Georgia Tech team thinks the same is true for Kepler 62f, a super-Earth-sized planet orbiting around a star about 1,200 light-years away from us. How important is axial tilt for climate? Large variability in axial tilt could be a key reason why Mars transformed from a watery landscape billions of years ago to today's barren desert. Mars is in the habitable zone in our solar system, but its axial tilt has been very unstable, varying from 0 to 60 degrees, said Georgia Tech assistant professor Gongji Li, who led the study together with graduate student Yutong Shan from the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. That instability probably contributed to the decay of the Martian atmosphere and the evaporation of surface water. As a comparison, Earth's axial tilt oscillates more mildly, between 22.1 and 24.5 degrees, going from one extreme to the other every 10,000 or so years. The orientation angle of a planet's orbit around its host star can be made to oscillate by gravitational interaction with other planets in the same system. If the orbit were to oscillate at the same speed as the precession of the planet's spin axis, akin to the circular motion exhibited by the rotation axis of a top or gyroscope, the spin axis would also wobble back and forth, sometimes dramatically. Mars and Earth interact strongly with each other, as well as with Mercury and Venus. As a result, by themselves, their spin axes would precess with the same rate as the orbital oscillation, which may cause large variations in their axial tilt. Fortunately, the Moon keeps Earth's variations in check. The Moon increases our planet's spin axis precession rate and makes it differ from the orbital oscillation rate. Mars, on the other hand, doesn't have a large enough satellite to stabilize its axial tilt. It appears that both exoplanets are very different from Mars and the Earth because they have a weaker connection with their sibling planets, said Lee, a faculty member in the School of Physics. We don't know whether they possess moons, but our calculations show that even without satellites, the spin axes of Kepler 186f and 62f would have remained constant over tens of millions of years. 
Kepler 186f is less than 10% larger in radius than Earth, but its mass, composition and density remain a mystery. It orbits its host star every 130 days. According to NASA, the brightness of that star at high noon, while standing on 186F, would appear as bright as the Sun just before sunset here on Earth. Kepler 186F is located in the constellation Cygnus as part of a five-planet star system. Kepler 62F was the most Earth-like exoplanet until scientists noticed 186F in 2014. It's about 40% larger than our planet and is likely a terrestrial or ocean-covered world. It's in the constellation Lyra and is the outermost planet among five exoplanets orbiting a single star. That's not to say either exoplanet has water, let alone life. But both are relatively good candidates. Our study is among the first to investigate climate stability of exoplanets and adds to the growing understanding of these potentially habitable nearby worlds, said Lee. I don't think we understand enough about the origin of life to rule out the possibility of their presence on planets with irregular seasons, added Sean. Even on Earth, life is remarkably diverse and has shown incredible resilience in extraordinarily hostile environments. But a climatically stable planet might be a more comfortable place to start. However, new observations of its star suggest that the surface of Kepler 186f may be very different to and much less favorable for the existence of life, at least, to life as we know it. Working with an international team of researchers, the astronomer Kadi Acuna from the National Observatory in Rio de Janeiro and her doctoral student Diogo Suto conducted the first detailed analysis of the chemical composition of the star Kepler-186. Their study was published in February of this year in the Astrophysical Journal and presents the chemical analysis of another red dwarf, Kepler-138, which is orbited by the smallest rocky exoplanet discovered so far, with a body the size of Mars. This was the first time that astronomers were able to measure the chemical abundances of red dwarf stars with accuracies resembling those possible when observing stars similar to the Sun. The analysis of the light emitted by a star, which is known as the star's spectrum, provides a general understanding of the abundances of the chemical elements that comprise it. However, Suto explains that the temperatures in the atmospheres of red dwarf stars are low enough to allow the formation of water, titanium oxide and vanadium oxide molecules. When these stars are observed in the visible light range, titanium oxide masks the presence of several chemical elements. Even so, Suto showed that, by using infrared, it is possible to identify and measure the abundances of 13 chemical elements in red dwarf stars. Suto and Cunha used data obtained from Apogee, a high-precision spectrograph installed on a telescope in New Mexico, to estimate the concentrations of different chemical elements in the two stars and concluded that Kepler-186f contains more silicon than the Sun. This excess silicon would cause the planets around the red dwarf to be made of rocks so hard that they would prevent the formation of tectonic plates in their crusts. Without tectonic plates, there would be no processes to recycle gases, liquids and rocks, which, on Earth, over billions of years, have determined the chemical compositions of the atmosphere, the continents and the oceans. Without oceans or continents constantly altered by the movement of tectonic plates, Kepler-186f would have a relatively unchanging and possibly desert surface. The other red dwarf, Kepler-138, showed silicon levels similar to those of the Sun, so its small rocky exoplanet would have a composition that could favor the formation of tectonic plates. Even so, it is too close to the star to have liquid water on its surface. In future, we may get more information about this planet. Scientists in NASA are working on new technology, which may help us to find about the atmosphere of the planet or we don't know life may have already present on this planet. For more interesting videos, please subscribe my channel and don't forget to like this video and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, we will meet in the next video, bye.